We are live. This is the market update. Want to buy the dip? Want to buy the dip in Gary Gensler's face? Want to hear about the future of water? Want to hear what the solution or one possible solution is to this tragedy in Ohio? Don't go anywhere. If you need a roadmap in crypto, subscribe to this channel. Turn on alerts so you know when we're going live. And if the content works for you, hit the like button. All right, let's welcome who's on the stream today. We're going to do like speed market update today. We have Shizzy, Richard Barry first on the stream. Welcome. GF, Rugby Performance Labs, Dollar Menu, nominating me for president. Appreciate that. Mission 5, Austin's Finest, Farmer Sam Forrest. Welcome. Carpe Diem, East Tennessee. Amsterdam is ready, up late at night. Top Semper Fidelis is here. Welcome. Robin, looking for a dose of the market update. Coming right up. Croatia, Zoran is here. Jappy, Reverend Flashback from Germany. Welcome. Sebastian. <laughs> Sebastian isn't selling anything. Facile Technology, Haruna, what's up? Ashton is here. Good afternoon, everybody. Good morning. Good evening. Justin from Austin, Texas in Hutto. Welcome. Local guy. Jan from Poland in the house. Welcome. Lord Junta is here. Okay, people. I'm not playing. I'm just not. Here we go. Ready? Gary Gensler. SEC to sue crypto trust Paxos over Binance stablecoin. This actually caused a massive dump in Pax Gold as everybody goes, oh my God, it's the apocalypse. You know what? I'm going to tell you why that's not the case. First off, okay, Binance DPEGs, okay, we talked about that. All right, and then we had this other article, which I don't have right this second. Wait, here it is. Stablecoin issuer Circle warned New York regulators that their competitors weren't doing anything good. It's like, wow, Binance FUD spread directly to the SEC, true or not. And now you know what it's really all about, right? USDC tattles on everybody, rightly, wrongly, doesn't matter. Anything that attacks CZ is a good thing. Even crypto Twitter thinks that, or at least it thought that in December. But let's follow it here. One, they want everyone out of stable coins. Two, they want USDC to be the stable coin, which means they want it to be Fed coin. So not only does the SEC want everyone out of stable coins, but you want out of stable coins. Because USDC is FedCoin, or they're going to tell you it's FedCoin or give you FedCoin or whatever. Now, people will want or use FedCoin for whatever reason, but here's a funny thing. They just held up a giant sign that says, we're stupid by Bitcoin. Seriously. They're trying to come down on crypto, but what they've done is, They've made the stable coin world into a playground for naughty children who may or may not be naughty. It doesn't matter. Who wants to own stable coins? Nobody. Okay. So what are you going to do? Cash out? Leave crypto? Go into fiat? Take, take big wads of dollar bills and put them in coffee cans and bury them in the backyard? What? No. They're going to stay on chain. They're going to buy ETH. They're going to buy Bitcoin. They're like, oh, Gary, look, you marked ETH down. You see, well, oh, check it out. Gary, you marked it down for us. It's like the department store sale day. You marked it down. Everyone's afraid. But the reality is what you should be afraid of is that this thing just takes off and smokes to the upside because everybody goes, okay, well, I'm out of stable coins. Bitcoin, Ethereum, and I might as well take my shot at altcoins. You can have regulatory risk or, I don't know, childish behavior, regulatory risk. 
Or oh, market risk. Gee, I wonder which one I should pick. Meanwhile, Kathy Wood, okay, can't buy enough Coinbase stock. There isn't any more Coinbase stock because Kathy Wood bought it all. Meanwhile, back at the Coinbase ranch, they're like, you know what? We're going to defend our staking program. Because here's what's funny. And I read this somewhere on Twitter. Don't know if this is true or not. But you know, the SEC may actually have been right about whatever Kraken was doing. So this is very contrarian, right? Coinbase staking program compliant. Kraken, maybe not. SEC corrects Kraken, but creates hysteria across the market. So if Coinbase is compliant and everybody's got to get into Bitcoin and ETH to get out of stable coins, why is everyone selling? Well, everyone's selling because they're afraid. Well, the good news is that's why we have this show. Okay. UAE plans to issue a central bank digital currency to promote digital payments. Okay. In other words, one of the things that CBDCs might not be evil for is for onboarding the world or onboarding communities into crypto. But this idea that we have to kill stable coins in order to bring out a CBDC is folly. It's going to backfire on them. Crypto payments firm and Visa have a partnership in 40 countries. They got a crypto punk on their balance sheet. You know what I'm saying? Pantera Capital on Bitcoin. We're in the next bull market cycle. Thank God we have hedge funds to tell us these things. You knew that a month ago. I'm happy to say, because I'm obsessed with the happiness of my audience. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, we're in the next bull cycle. And when you're in a bull cycle, dips scare everyone off. Dips make it look like a repeat of the last bear market. You call it the knife experience. So, of course, you wake up, Pax goes down, Gensler's all over the Wall Street Journal, Oh my God. And then you find out it was because, you know, circle tattled on Binance. This is, this is how they're going to take down crypto with tattletales. They're not. And Bitcoin is down and they flushed it out. And guess what? Guess what? Okay. Let's just go to DeMarc. Just keep it real simple. So this is ETH, right? This is like textbook. Four hour chart, one through nine. Okay, these are a certain set of conditions, like the low is lower than the low two days ago. It's quantitative. This is like the OG quant TA, seriously, from like the 80s. So, one through nine, the beginning part of the trend called setup. Then there's a little counter trend move, and then you complete the move with a 13. One through nine, one through 13, done. Now, could they puke ETH out to 14, 12 off the CPI number tomorrow? Yeah, whatever. 1420 was the 2017 high. And I argue that the 2017 high is the biggest level in the history of crypto TA. This is a stop fishing exercise. It doesn't matter how you cut it. It doesn't matter how you slice it. If you took the sequential work off, it's very simple. A, B, C, or it's one, two, three, four, five, done. Any way you cut this, it's over, in my opinion. Now, could they puke it tomorrow on CPI? Could they lose their mind? Sure. Just remember. Everyone's coming out of stable coins and that money is either got to get cashed out of the system or go back into Bitcoin or Ethereum or whatever. How about optimism? How about any of these coins that are down 8% today? Right? ETH. Again, there's the 13 bottom. There is the big selling climax puke, right? So sometimes you get the 13 signal, right? Sometimes you get it, it doesn't work. But sometimes you get the 13 signal and then you get a little more. You get like a blow off bottom. Okay. Looks like they're doing a blow off bottom. 1450 is support. Okay. Bitcoin. Okay. Bitcoin kind of a battle 
right at 21,600. What, what is the rationale to sell this? Like, what is the rationale to sell this at this point? Right? Very simple downtrend, right? You can call it A, B, C, right? See the C? That means done. Or if you want to be kind of like on the more bearish side, it's one, two, three, four, five. I mean, if you look at it that way, it's over. It's done. Now, do you want to buy it in front of the inflation number tomorrow? No. The last time you had to buy the market, it was in front of the Fed numbers, in front of the Fed release. Now, I'm not telling you to buy it because we don't do investment advice. Okay. Technically speaking, Bitcoin daily chart, there's your nine bottom, right? 13 top, nine bottom. I mean, the case, I, I'm sorry. I, I can't find a case to sell Bitcoin at 21. To me, 21 feels like a gift. Now, ETH, okay. ETH may have three more down days. In a in like a worst case scenario, there's moving average support at 1446. They may press the issue in ETH. Uh, I still think, I still think, even if today, today's a bad day, tomorrow could be a bad day. I'm not gonna turn around my view. So this is the difference between being an analyst and a trader. Traders have to manage risks, analysts have to manage their research framework and their view. I want to buy support. I want to buy pukes. I want to buy the running of stops. That's what I want to do. All right. So let's check in and see who else is here. Reality realization. So do I think S and P will not go down? Okay. So S and P currently doing a kind of a classic where I don't know, it breaks trend lines or tests trend lines, depending on how you draw it. Uh, they stop everyone out and then it goes higher. I don't want to get too cavalier the day before an employment number, but the fact of the matter is equities really haven't gone anywhere. I mean, if if you consider, if you consider the universal Armageddon thinking in equities and the economy. And by the way, if you like universal Armageddon, we're going to get to that in a second. Because I can finally get loud about the place that I work at, like really loud. Okay. This is the running of the stops, right? They get the stops and they ram it the other way. I mean, it's the oldest trick in the book in stocks. Now the only question is, uh, you know, when, when are they done in crypto? Like, let's just take a look at Solana, like on, on an 89 minute chart. Actually, let's, let's go to DeMarc on Solana. Then I do, I do want to welcome who is here. Like, everyone missed this and I bet no one will touch it. Okay. So again, here's Solana, right? Nine bottom at $9 when DO buys. Up to 25, okay, nine top. Sideways, down, nine bottom. <clears throat> I mean, these nine tops and nine bottoms, they're not perfect. I mean, this one was. I mean, if you take out the sequential... They do. Okay. If you take out the sequential work, okay, it's this simple in Solana. One, see the red one, two, and you could have three up. You imagine a three wave that is at a minimum a new high, like 30. Don't you think that can't happen? Okay. Render. 
Okay, mixed signal on the daily chart. Let's look at the tactical view. Okay, so render attempts to go up, goes way up, collapses, gets a 13 bottom. Okay, now it's got a nine bottom here, and this is either a base or there's going to be one more puke down, and then it's going to go. This is going to be A, B, C. Like, if there's a puke in render off CPI, read my mind. Cardano, 13 top, end of January, sell. Nine bottom, today, 35 cents. What was the high in this? Three dollars. Do you do you need the market update after you heard that? I hope so, but do you need it? SFG is here. Welcome. Okay, Moonbeam. Same thing. A B C. One two. One, two, three, four, five. Done. Okay, that's 90 minute. Let's look at four hour. No real DeMarc sequential signal there. Maybe you got two more down days. So maybe it's one of these things where you're grabbing it, where you're grabbing it off CPI. Okay, DeMarc seven on the four hour near chart. Okay, 90 minutes, like to support at 212. Like to support at 212. So it's almost like find a support point and give it a shot. Okay, rose, like massive new high, 13 top. That was the 12th. Then they dropped it. Okay, now it's, it's on a nine. So, you know, sometimes when you get a nine bottom, you can get, an uptick, and then it resumes. Let's hope that's not the case. Okay, if you get it, if you get, <clears throat> if you get a dip off CPI, big picture, I think that's the dip when you look at stuff like rows. Okay. Okay, H bar. I want to say I had these all on one. Okay, here's H bar 90 minute. So they can't really buy this fast enough at the tactical level. Okay, there is a slight risk you get a move back to 0.075. I, I don't know that I'm in a hurry to pay up, but again, people want this. People want it, obviously. Right? The graph. Okay, so you got the 13 bottom over here. You got the nine bottom over here. This is on a 90 minute chart. So this goes from 23 cents back to 14. Either this was a VC pump and dump. You won't know until you try to buy the dip. If you can't buy the dip tomorrow and make money, then maybe I'm wrong about this whole thing. But I'm definitely not packing it in on Gary Gensler. That's for sure. <laughs> Talk about carrying me out. They're forcing people out of stable coins. Like, is there a, is there a DPEG graph on this? I don't know. I don't. I don't know if there's a graph of the Binance coin, or the the BUSD DPEG. I guess there doesn't have to be. Okay, Jasmine, thirteen bottom on the four hour chart. Does this market trade great? No. Are they worried about the inflation? Yeah. Okay. Okay. King wants to know, is Avalanche dead? No. Avalanche is definitely not dead. The question is, when should you buy Avalanche? On investment advice. Is it tomorrow? Or is it two days from now? 
So this is 90 minute avalanche. Okay. I have a good support point at $17 and 16 cents. So no one wanted it at 10. Everyone wanted it at 23. And then at $17 and 16 cents, I'm supposed to puke this out and get bearish because of Gary Gensler and circle tattling on Binance. I, I mean, seriously. And they're, they're telling you to get out of cash. So everyone's like, crypto can't go up because there's a liquidity problem. The Fed's not putting money. This is, this is true. This is true. You, but I'm not talking about a 2021 bull market. The SEC has told you to get out of crypto cash. Okay, no problem. You know, you get bad news tomorrow or you get something that the algos don't like and they drop it and run stops. Don't be shocked if it comes straight back. Now, again, don't want to be a complete cowboy madman. And don't worry, I'm going to continue on Avalanche here. Let's go to the four-hour chart, see if, if we get the same read. So we're headed for a 13 and a 9 bottom. Again, <clears throat> I'm not the only one who knows that they're supported 1680. Okay? And this downtrend appears to be exhausted. Appears to be exhausted. If people are selling crypto tomorrow, who are you selling it to? Probably people who are big. That's a guess. Aruna is here. Megan. Megan is back. Okay. King is here. Bart Hendricks. Okay. Ro he likes Rose. I'm down. I'm down. I mean, people, you, you got to shoot your shot on top of 1420. I mean, I, I could be wrong. I've been in this market since I was in, since I was 18 years old in 1991. I have been wrong. I have been wrong for years. I don't care. Like I, I in this market, I don't care. I remember back in 2009, 2010, the guys who became legends were the guys that when everyone was selling it and everyone was bearish. <clears throat> even though it would go down and you'd think it would hold and then it would go like, it would do like two overshoots. <clears throat> Let me see if I can find like the double overshoot. Maybe we'll go back to ETH. Back then, <clears throat> you know, it would go down and then it would go down, down, down. Like it would just look like it was going to break. But then after they would try to kill it for like the third time, That's when he grabbed it. So it looks like this is the first time down. Then this, either this is the second and that's the third, or this is the second and there'll be a final puke off CPI. But just at the moment where you think it's all over, that's where the high conviction people coming in. And that is how I'm doing 2023. Fuck it. It's as simple as that. That is what I'm doing this year. You know, I read this thing on Twitter that said the way you want to do it is, you know, you want to be very specific about your niche and you want to be really passionate about your audience. And I'm like, well, well, shit, I'm doing that on YouTube. It's like the first how to do something on Twitter thing that I finally understood. Thanks to my producer, Eagle King. And I'm like, it's going to make me hit it even harder on YouTube. Especially when, you know, like you got kids playing in a regulatory sandbox. Forget about that. Who wants digital assets when everybody is bearish? Everybody. Right? JP Stanley says, yes, I sound bullish. Yes. So if I'm wrong, we'll have the Eat Humble Pie live stream. Now, let's talk about Humble Pie. Okay. So... As many of you may know, I work for a company called Gold Retriever. Gold Retriever, the way I describe it is you can hold GLDN, the native token, and you can get paid in PAX G, which by the way, seems okay at the moment. You can get paid in gold 
to buy water, which is Bark. Bark is a water pricing token. Gold Retriever has three of the five water licenses to get water out of Greenland to the places that need it the most. And you're like, well, who needs that? How about all the people that live next to this? Where this stuff vaporized into the air and is now water particles. Fish dying in lakes. You drinking this water? I don't think so. I mean, this literally looks like something out of an end of the world movie. Get the hell out of there. These people need a whole new water supply. The whole new water supply. This is a very attractive view out your front front door window. And of course, you know, prior to this, uh, you know, there's a limit to how much I could pound the table without sounding, you know, like I'm not objective. Gee, I, I guess this takes care of objective. Right? Like if you look at this, EPA, it's safe. Your government is killing you. This is like Ohio Chernobyl. Like this is not a small area. This is huge. Like Ohio State University, like their American football teams, they win every year because they get the best kids from this huge state in Ohio. Ohio now looks like this, not the whole state, but this is not funny. This is absolutely not funny. And look at this. This is Bark. Now, you need GLDN to buy Bark. It's highly speculative. It is an altcoin. I own it. You can lose money in altcoins. The thing I like about it, about the chart, is that Everyone was given up, and this was below the bottom Bollinger Band right before that came out. Explosion in East Palestine has reportedly contaminated the Ohio River as far west as West Virginia, a water source for 5 million people. I mean, basically the way it works, just so you know, I mean, I try, kind of kind of getting a rough sketch. Like, Bark is a token that is eventually going to be used to price water, or so we hope. So a board ape is 60 ETH. A metric ton of water will be 18 Bark, let's say. 20 Bark. I don't know. Now, even if that doesn't take, which it should... Gold Retriever is a business. So as water is bought and sold, part of the revenue from that is going to be used to just flat out buy back the token. So the more volume there is in water because of droughts in Arizona or the Middle East or everybody in Ohio wakes up to this, Gold Retriever then takes the money, transacts in fiat and uses it to buy back the token. And then eventually people start transacting in water in the token. And it just sits here and no one cares. I go on Twitter spaces. Me and my boss get raked over to Kohl's. You know, nothing could ever happen. No one's going to buy this. No one's going to do it. Okay. Okay. Right. In other words, eventually apocalyptic chemical disaster rages on. This is the only problem that's ever going to happen. Right. Nothing could happen. Nothing could go wrong, right? You don't need crypto. You don't need alternative assets. You don't need commodities on the blockchain. You don't need Bitcoin. You don't need ETH, right? Ask the relatives of the 17,000 people who perished in Turkey, right? Don't be, don't be scared. Be prepared. You know, you can sit and talk about this, but then there's like somewhat of an intelligent investable solution. So it's not investment advice. I work there. I own this. I, I, okay, I got it. But there's 5 million people in the United States that don't have water as of right now. And with, with this, like, is this, is this like an afternoon cleanup? I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. 
Let's try to bring this back. Let's try this. Sorry, it's like an ad popped up, scared me. Is the news that you read on TV tradable facts? Like on one hand, the SEC is coming down on crypto, people are selling. Then you have other items where you might be able to do value investing and no one's interested. And you know what? That's okay. Because the longer it takes for the market to sort of kind of figure it out, the more violent the move is going to be. It's like a psychological version of the bigger the base, the higher in the space. Okay. Okay, let me just hang on. The bigger the base, the higher in the space. Nick says, thanks for helping keep me sane throughout this madness. No problem. Okay, Rave Song Records is here. Welcome. Okay, Megan is asking me, do I have a Discord? Okay, I don't personally have a Discord. Okay, but I believe, I, I believe uh, maybe the Golden Retriever community has a Discord. Okay, okay, we're sending you to Richard Barry's Discord. So I don't personally have a Discord. We're working on that. But I do, co I do hang out with Richard Barry from Augusta, Georgia. So feel free to check out his Discord. I don't have Discord yet. We are doing YouTube. YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, right? Twitter. Watch out on Twitter because I may be on the Bark Twitter soon. Okay. And then the podcast will follow. Gold Retriever does not have a Discord as of yet. So if you want to, if you want to get busy in Discord, I'll pop into Richard Barry's group. Okay. And, and my friend Sleazy Mints, Mink says, yes, I will at some point. And good afternoon to I Need an App. All right. Okay, Jasmine. Okay, doesn't look perfect. Doesn't look perfect, but doesn't look terrible. My opinion on stuff like this is make them sell it to you at a good price. So if Jasmine is currently at like five, nine, six, eight, try five, four, and one, four, like just let them puke it out tomorrow. Let them get out of their system. Let them get it out of their system. Okay. JP Stanley, the black swan just keeps the black swans just keep coming, praying for better days. And yes, this is a good point, right? How do you invest in a constructive solution for the world? Look at the look at the headlines about crypto. It's Gensler. It's bad. It's stable coins. Oh my God. I'm, I'm suing you. This is not what crypto is supposed to be about. This is not what crypto is about. It's not. It's supposed to be something where you get outside this system. Right, the the legacy octopus is trying to get its hands on crypto. No, crypto is about believing in yourself. You got to manage risk. If you bought ETH at seventeen hundred and you lost money, then do a new trade. Do a new trade. Okay, and they've made this difficult. They may make it difficult tomorrow. Jazz Gill is like buy the freer, right? Private sledge is here. Bitboy Al, welcome. This is all planned fud. I agree. There's a positive reaction to FUD. Like, I want to be constructive on FUD. Whether it's Bark, whether it's ETH, whether it's any of these coins that you may have feel like you missed, like somebody was saying, is Avalanche dead? And I don't think so. Like, let's just like throw this Fibonacci retracement up here. A 50% retracement is not dead. A 50% retracement is completely normal. Completely normal. Particularly if there's a 13 bottom in the morning. Okay, it's a four-hour chart. 
Okay. And again, you know, the daily chart, it's like, wow. That's almost 50% to the number close to it. 1671 DY DX. So on a four hour chart, you got about eight hours of negativity left. Okay. This feels like a nine bottom. Okay. This feels like DYDX actually bottomed early. So it feels like one, two, three, four. See the four? And then five. And of course, it looks like shit. It does look like it's going to go down. It looks terrible. It always is terrible at a bottom. This was kind of the argument I was talking about on Friday. It always looks terrible at a bottom. Now, it's either going to look terrible now or it's going to look terrible in the morning. Okay. Okay. My thoughts on, on big flip. Not sure I'm familiar with that. Okay. Richard Barry thanking me for a little ash, a uh, little discord love. No problem. Hello from Holland. Welcome. Jazz Gill likes the shorts on YouTube. By the way, we are cranking out three shorts per day on YouTube. If you're a live stream person, check those out. If you're a shorts person, welcome. Welcome to the stream. Okay. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Okay. Let's take a look and see what else people are looking at. Okay. So we have a, a crash prediction. <clears throat> okay. Rich dad, poor dad, authored author has issued a warning to investors following a recent wave of layoffs from tech giants. Google, Microsoft, Amazon, and Facebook telling his 2.3 million followers that a market crash has arrived. Okay. Silicon Valley do dominoes are falling. Valentine's Day massacre predicted by Stansbury Research. Everything will crash, including gold, silver, and I guess that means Bitcoin. Okay. Now, uh, he has 2.3 million followers and I don't. Tomorrow, Jer Jerome Powell comes out and says Fed funds are going to 6%. Then the market will crash. And, and you have to have a plan in case you have to stop yourself out. But... Let me ask you one, let me ask this question and then, you know, we're going to, we're going to keep it short and sweet today. So Tito N says, like, and subscribe. Don't forget to do that. Mr. Moby Deck says big flip equals inflation rising again. Okay. The food, food and eggs are going up. Um, people's credit cards are maxed out and you can't sell any houses in Austin, Texas. So I'm not sure. Not, I'm not sure how that happens, right? Everybody's calling for a crash. When everyone calls for a crash, you can get a flash crash. That I would believe where everyone just goes, oh my God. And then I think it comes back. Now, if that turns out to not be the case and everything falls apart, then just make sure you respect the market. But me, this is me personally. I am not going to sell on Gary Gensler. I'll manage risk, but I won't sell on Gary Gensler. And this, this is unbelievable. Like, I guess the market thinks we can't do it. We can do it. Four years in crypto. I finally found something I can really believe in. I own this. That's what I can tell you. And there's 5 million people in Ohio without water. And there's a way to invest on getting them water. It's a startup. It's a mini startup. It's not my startup, but I work there. So the best thing I can tell you is the charts. I can give you my tape on the take on the news. 
and I can tell you what I'm doing, right? So it's not investment advice. You need to manage risk into tomorrow off the Fed. If you're selling crypto, you'll know who you sold it to by how the market trades when they're done. So that's it for today. Speed market update. We will see you tomorrow post CPI.